Good evening, everyone. I'm Christopher Brantley. Thank you so much for joining us. Breaking news tonight coming out of Louisiana. At least three police officers were shot and killed in Baton Rouge, and several more were injured. That city is at the center of recent anger and protests over the police killing of a black man just two weeks ago. Alton Sterling was killed by police during a struggle. That incident has sparked a nationwide response on police brutality. And now the focus is shifting. ABC's Ray Ramundi comes to us live from New York to tell us the latest. Ray. Good evening. ABC News has confirmed the identity of the shooter as 29-year-old Gavin Long. And we are learning so much more information about those moments right before this deadly attack against Baton Rouge police officers. That suspect is dead, and this attack against law enforcement coming just days after the Alton Sterling shooting there in Baton Rouge and the deadly police ambush in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Roads blocked off, sirens blaring, and what sound like gunshots crackling in the distance. The city of Baton Rouge waking to more violence. Shot fired, officer down. Got a city officer down. Shot fired. Police officers responding to calls of shots fired just before 9 a.m. When they arrive, the bullets are aimed right at them. I'm hit. The president wasting no time in condemning this attack on police. Everyone right now focus on words and actions that can unite this country rather than divide it further. The deadly confrontation shocking people living in the area. I don't feel like we're safe. I don't feel, I mean, I feel horrible for the cops, you know, for the whole police force. This comes as the city is still reeling in the aftermath of the killing of Alton Sterling. Nearly two weeks ago, police confronted Sterling, shooting him during a struggle. Video of the event, along with another shooting of a black man in Minnesota, set off nationwide protest. The governor also pleading for unity in this troubled city. It's unjustified, it's unjustifiable. The violence, the hatred just has to stop. And authorities are confirming two people have been detained near Baton Rouge, who they are referring to as persons of interest in the shooting. The Justice Department has pledged to offer all necessary resources to assist in this ongoing police investigation. Ray Ray Mundy, ABC News, New York. Back to you. Ray from New York, thank you so much. An annual event for first responders took on an added meaning today. The Boots vs. Badges event was held today at the Sarasota Square Mall. It's a friendly competition between the police and firefighters. Firefighters and law enforcement went head-to-head -to, -head to see who can encourage the most people to roll up their sleeves and donate. The bank says they are running critically low on all blood types. Both firefighters and law enforcement, we have a very hard job. We're out there trying to serve the citizens of whatever community they live in. And we're just trying to do the very best we can to take care of the public's needs in a very timely fashion and a very professional manner. The Suncoast Blood Bank always accepts donations at its donor centers and blood mobile locations. And Manatee County officials are investigating after a body was found in Braden River. The body was found in the water near Lafayette Street off Manatee Avenue. Deputies say it looks like the victim accidentally drowned and there was no foul play. The investigation is ongoing. And Manatee County has its first case of Zika virus. It's a traveler's case. The Florida Department of Health extending the public health emergency to include the county. Now some worry it may impact tourism. ABC 7's Kate Flexter talked to local businesses today and has the story. Kate. That's right, Christopher, and it's important to note that this was a traveler's case, meaning the virus was contracted elsewhere and then brought to Manatee County. It's Florida's biggest industry, tourism, and it's booming in Manatee County, raking in more than a billion dollars last year. But with the county's first traveler case of the Zika virus, some local businesses worry it might deter visitors from coming to the area. I'm not concerned about the Zika virus actually being here. I am concerned about people being worried to come here because of the Zika virus. Kathy Smart of Minnie's Beach Cafe remembers the BP oil spill and says while it didn't have a huge impact on local beaches, it did have an impact on business. She worries this could be a similar situation. With the Zika virus, it's pretty much the same type of a scare. So why take the chance of coming here when they can go 30 or 40 miles in the opposite direction and not have the Zika virus? But many of the tourists we spoke to said knowing the virus is in the area wouldn't keep them from visiting. You know, this has been a trip we planned for a long time and and 
we would have come no matter what. At Anna Maria Island Water Sports, they say travelers who are educated about the virus and know how it spreads won't be deterred from heading to the area. As far as people who know about it and know where the vectors lie, I think it won't deter them from traveling. Israel says it all depends on how these cases are handled and contained. If the county sees a spike in cases, he says it has the potential to impact business. If it was the first case and um, we'll just have to see where it goes from there. If it uh, continues to outbreak like that, um, there could be some negative consequences for that. But if it's just that one isolated case, I don't think there should be a big problem. As of Friday, Florida now has more than 300 cases of the virus. All of those cases are the result of travel to countries where the virus is more widespread. Christopher? All right, Kate, thank you so much. A few manatee spottings on the Sun Coast today. Manatee County's Facebook page shared this video of a group of manatees swimming close to shore off Coquina Beach on Friday. Another group of manatees was also spotted today off Siesta Key. No word if it was the same group of manatees. And now for a first check on our weather, let's head over to Wendy Ross. Wendy, good evening. Good evening, and we are getting our afternoon showers and thunderstorms once again. Not as many, however, are forming at this time, and most of the showers have moved into the Gulf of Mexico. You can see lots of lightning strikes if you're looking out towards the beaches right now. And what we are looking at on shore is widely scattered thunderstorms that are moving on in, and most of these showers have formed east of I-75 and continue the track on towards the beaches, and that's what's been going on and will continue to take place over the next couple of hours. A lot of these showers coming to us from the south, moving towards the northwest, and so that's where we're seeing the, uh, the rain and the thunderstorms. 88 degrees right now. It's still very hot out, but we had a record high today, and we'll tell you what it was when we come back after the break for the main weather. Christopher? All right, Wendy, thank you so much. And beautiful weather for the inaugural golf tournament linking Sarasota and Bradenton together. The two-man North-South Championship is taking place this weekend on the Sun Coast. Yesterday, about 94 golfers played at the River Run Golf Links. Today, they moved down to Bobby Jones Golf Club in Sarasota. Event organizers say the point is to get players out to a different course and build a bond between the neighboring players. Competition, however, is fierce. Good exposure for both the courses for the guys that normally play here only to come up and play our place and vice versa. Looking forward to growing the field and uh, just making this one of the you know outstanding events on an annual basis. And although the last few days have seen some heavy rain, organizers say it didn't affect their playing or the field. And a blast to the past this weekend for artists at the Sarasota Municipal Auditorium. 45 vendors selling things they've collected for years, from furs to tie-dye and disco balls to elephant saddles. The event had it all. Hundreds of people packed the auditorium over the last two days. One of those people, an artist we spoke to today, said she was looking for old watch parts to create jewelry. Vintage watch parts, keys, uh, findings, buttons, things like that. It's the thing. I, mean, I think everybody here, all of the vendors here, we just really love the hunt, and you can't, you can only pack so much stuff in. The Vintage Collectible Show is held six times a year and is always a very popular event. And still to come here on ABC7, security concerns in Cleveland. Law enforcement is on high alert for the Republican National Convention, especially after today's shooting in Baton Rouge. Need new windows? Buy direct from the factory. New South Window is having a sale. The more you buy, the more you save. Buy four windows, save 25%. Buy six windows, save 30%. Buy eight or more windows and save 35%. How? Because New South owns the factory and you cut out the middleman. Award-winning, energy-efficient windows and doors installed with a lifetime warranty. New South Windows are made in Florida for Florida homes by Florida workers. Visit NewSouthWindow.com or call now. They say good things come to those that wait. Well, you've waited long enough. You deserve to feel fabulous in your fashionable new Fiat 500X from Alfa Romeo Fiat in Sarasota. Boldly innovative, seductively stylish. Fiat gives you everything you'd expect from a capable utility vehicle, like a spacious interior and advanced safety systems, designed and built like a sexy little sportster. Don't wait any longer. You deserve to feel fabulous. Get a new Fiat at Alfa Romeo Fiat of Sarasota. Monday on ABC 7 News at 7. The convention's going to be terrific. We have great speakers. We have fantastic speakers. 
presumptive presidential nominee is ready for Cleveland. Actors, athletes, and even a few GOP stalwarts are coming out for the show that is the Republican National Convention. I'm Alan Cohn. We'll have that story and more as we broadcast live from Cleveland. Monday on ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. We're starting the week on a sophisticated and classy note. I'm Stephanie Roberts. On Suncoast View, we're talking and trying caviar and learning how local groups are working to keep it sustainable right here on the Suncoast. We love new ideas. We'll meet local entrepreneurs with our economic buzz expert, plus how to protect your pets from heat exhaustion. And Roots Chris joins us in the kitchen. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. Thanks to my volunteer, I am a better reader. Thanks to my volunteer, math seems simple now. Thanks to my volunteer, I discovered new career goals. I'm a volunteer for Sarasota County Schools, so I know I can make a difference. And you can too. Give an hour, change a life. Back now into last week's deadly terror attack in France. French officials say authorities have arrested two more people in connection with the attack that killed 84 people. French authorities took a man and a woman into custody. Saturday, they announced five people were being questioned. That brings the total number of people detained to seven. A source close to the investigation says Mohamed Boulao, who killed 84 people, spoke supportively of ISIS days before the attack. Bulal drove a 20-ton truck into the crowd on Thursday. On, during Bastille Day celebrations, 84 people were killed and more than 200 were wounded. The promenade where the massacre happened has now reopened. And to Cleveland we go, where security is top of mind as the Republican National Convention is set to start. And with today's deadly shooting in Baton Rouge that killed three police officers, law enforcement in Ohio are on high alert. The stage set for the Republican National Convention in Cleveland as the focus takes a turn. Donald Trump tweeting, We grieve for the officers killed in Baton Rouge today. How many law enforcement and people have to die because of a lack of leadership in our country? We demand law and order. With barricades and fences set up, and, you swear. and officers from around the country sworn in to keep protests planned for this week safe, Today, an urgent call from Cleveland's police union, concerned about Ohio's open carry law. The union sending a letter to Governor John Kasich asking for emergency executive action to ban weapons from being openly carried in Cleveland during the convention. Kasich releasing a video today, but making no mention of that request. I just spoke to the Ohio Highway Patrol and told them about how much we appreciate their service here at the convention in Cleveland, only to be informed of the terrible loss of life the police officers in Baton Rouge. Our hearts and prayers go out to their families. Before the shootings in Louisiana, Cleveland's police chief saying, in light of recent attacks in Dallas and Nice, they have reviewed their security plans but have not made any changes. As I've said uh, time and time again, uh, during the planning process for the RNC, we plan for anything and everything uh, that could happen. And a reminder, ABC7 will have special coverage of both the Republican and Democratic National Conventions. ABC7's Ray Collins and Alan Cohn are right now in Cleveland preparing for the RNC. And then the following week, it's the Democratic National Convention. Alan Cohn, Adam Cellini, and Haley Wilgus will be in Philadelphia to bring you all of the latest developments. And back here in Florida, two people were shot and killed at a hospital. It happened early this morning at Parrish Medical Center in Titusville, east of Orlando. Police say 29-year-old David Owens shot an elderly patient and a hospital employee who was sitting in the patient's room. That suspect is now in custody. Authorities credit two unarmed security guards at the hospital for taking down Owens. I, I think you have to give great credit to not only the staff here at the hospital, but also the two security guards that are part of that staff 
that kept uh, significant damage from being done further. Their, uh, their actions to attack the suspect, uh, both the security guards were actually unarmed, but their actions to attack the suspect and work as a team kept others from getting hurt. There's no question about that. The motive for the shooting is unknown. Authorities say it appears Owens randomly targeted the victims. And four people have been arrested, but deputies are still looking for a murder suspect who ran out of a Florida courtroom on Friday. Broward County deputies call it a planned escape. Waist shackles, handcuffs, and bailiffs didn't stop Deontay Omar Roselius from escaping the courtroom. Witnesses say the 21-year-old ran through the chambers, swinging doors, then dropped his striped jumpsuit and handcuffs in the hallway before exiting the building. We know that this escape was pre-planned. We know that Rosales had accomplices. We are actively serving search warrants and applying for search warrants as we speak. Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel says an accomplice was waiting in a getaway car while Rosales' girlfriend somehow undid his shackles, leapt a barrier, and fled while two others signaled they were clear. Their plan was successful. The sheriff's office is offering a $20,000 reward for information on Rosales' location. And Rapper Pitbull's new music video looks like a four-minute advertisement for Florida because that's what it is. Pitbull recently signed with Visit Florida last year. He just released a video for Sexy Beaches that includes scenes from two nearby Florida beaches. The video has already gotten more than one million views on YouTube since it was released on Wednesday. Look at that. We could not find out if it was one of our beaches. We could not find out if it was Siesta Key. We're working on that, it though. It looked like the, uh, I can't remember, it just escaped me, the pink, that, that beautiful pink hotel that sits the out. Don the Cesar. Don Cesar. Yes, that was P. it. We That's know what, about that one. Okay. But yeah. we were looking for, say, for Siesta Key earlier. I couldn't find it. You would think, right? You would think. You would it's think. the number one beach. It's the number one beach, and that's probably a great place to have gone today because we were hot today. We had a record high today. 96 degrees was our official temperature. You can see that back in 2010, we were one degree cooler at 95 degrees. That was the record on this date back in 2010. And today, 96 degrees. So it was very hot out there. 76 was the overnight low. And right now, temperatures are in the upper 80s. We're looking at those winds coming in out of the south southwest at around three miles per hour. And temperatures all around the state now in the 80s and 90s and 70s. 70s where the rain has been falling. We are looking at our area reporting temperatures mostly in the 80s right now. And you can see a couple of locations now reporting 79 degrees in Mayaka City. And Arcadia was just 79, has popped back up to 80. And we are looking at very hot temperatures well east of I-75. The showers and thunderstorms started their march once again from the central part of the state over to the west coast of Florida. We're seeing showers all across the state of Florida and especially down the column of the state with more rain developing out here in the Atlantic and getting ready to make its way on shore. We've not seen as much in the way of rainfall as we had yesterday at this time. And what we're looking at are those thunderstorms are going to continue to move on out to sea and we're going to continue to see these isolated showers around until about eight or nine o'clock tonight. And everything is moving on towards the coastline right now. Temperature or the uh, rainfall amounts mostly anywhere from one to one and a half inches of rainfall in pockets where we've seen the heavier rains taking place. Many locations not getting any rain right now, but we could start to see some of these showers that are presently out there beginning to develop and move on towards the west, which will give some almost all of our viewing area some opportunity for some rain. That high pressure system, which is still in effect, is bringing in those winds out of the southeast, and then everything is meeting up with the westerly sea breezes, and that's where the collision course begins. So we start to see those showers developing during the afternoon hour. This is a typical summer-like pattern, and again, those chances of rain continue through the evening with the most of those rains developing inland. A very quick look into the tropics is showing that it's nice and quiet. We don't have anything that we have to worry about, so good news on that front. And as far as the next couple of days are concerned, be prepared for very hot temperatures, and our rain chances will increase as a result to a 50 to 60 percent chance of rain. Christopher? Now, sports. 
thank you so much. Seven more years for Tampa Bay Lightning's Alex Killorn. Lightning General Manager Steve Iserman announced today the forward has signed a seven-year contract worth an average of about $4.5 million per season. The 26-year-old played 81 games for the Lightning's last season, collecting 14 goals and 40 points. He skated in 17 Stanley Cup playoff games in 2015, where he recorded five goals. Killard was originally selected by the Lightning in the third round at the 2007 NHL Draft. And recently, it's become a rare occurrence for the Tampa Bay Rays, but a win. Today, the Rays would end the game with more runs than the Baltimore Orioles. Evan Longoria takes Orioles Dylan, Dylan Bundy way back to left field for a solo home run in the bottom of the first, tying the game at one. Bottom of the second, Oswaldo Arcia drives one, but to left field goes off Bundy with a man on base for a two-run homer. Add in a solo homer in the third and another in the eighth. The game would end 5-2 to two with two of those homers coming from Longoria. The Rays are heading to Colorado to take on the Rockies, our Rockies, tomorrow night. And more to come here on ABC7. Stay with us. At ABC7, our entire weathercast is dedicated to the Sun Coast. And now we bring it to you like never before with the all-new official Suncoast forecast. Beach and boating forecast. The winds will be out of the northwest at 10 knots. Now with the most advanced graphics and technology, we bring you weather where you live, pinpointing right down to your neighborhood. Zooming into the Sarasota Bayfront, the all-new official Suncoast forecast, only on ABC7, your Suncoast news. We're here for you. Monday on ABC7 News at 7. The convention's going to be terrific. We have great speakers. We have fantastic speakers. Presumptive presidential nominee is ready for Cleveland. Actors, athletes, and even a few GOP stalwarts are coming out for the show that is the Republican National Convention. I'm Alan Cohn. We'll have that story and more as we broadcast live from Cleveland. Monday on ABC7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We are here for you. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. On your TV, on your computer, on your camera, on your smartphone, on your Apple Watch. And now you can get ABC7, your Suncoast News on Roku. Just go to mysuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab for a list of fast and free downloads that deliver ABC7, your Suncoast News on the go. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. Hello, I'm Rebecca Vargas. And I'm Don Brennan. Texting while walking, sending emails while talking. Multitasking is part of our daily lives, but it can do more harm than good. Monday on Good Morning Sun Coast will show you how it has a negative effect on physical and mental health. John? Well, a little bit of a lull in our rainfall chances next week. We'll talk about that bright and early. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. Dog days of summer got you down? Beat the heat with huge summer savings during the summer clearance event going on now at Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. You'll be the coolest family on the block in your all-new Chrysler Pacifica for just $27,999. Or get the lowest price ever on a new Dodge Journey, just $15,999. And right now, get up to $10,000 off a new Ram Crew Cab. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Well, Pokemon Go has taken the United States by storm, but some people don't seem to understand what well, all the fuss is about. CNN's Jeannie Mose investigates why people want to catch them all. This is Pokemon for Slowpokes. Really, they're called Pokeballs? Yes, they're called Pokeballs. Slowpokes who don't know a war turtle. War turtle, holy shit. From a ratata, and frankly, don't give a rat. Well, you know. 
Morning hosts are pretending they know what they're talking about. Uh, they're squirty uh, sitting on top of a casket. Squirtle. Even Squirtle, excuse me. And even hip late night comedians need pronunciation pointers. Pokemon? Did you say po Pokemon? Pokemon. I say Pokemon now. Developers have now done the impossible, designed a game that you cannot play on the toilet. <laughs> That's the good news. Former couch potato gamers have to move around outside looking for Pokemon to pop up for them to try to catch by flicking balls at them. I started playing two days ago and I've gotten more exercise than I have like in the last month. The bad news? They're walking around like zombies. And it has revolutionized the way people almost get hit by cars staring at their phones. <laughs> A guy in Brooklyn's Prospect Park posted what he claimed was himself falling in a pond here, while playing Pokemon. There's someone on the bridge? Yeah, I heard him talking. Wow. Holy I did not realize that was water. As for driving while playing Pokemon... <laughs> One father-to-be admitted to playing Pokemon while waiting for his wife to become a mom. And though this Atlanta church welcomed gamers, this church is a pokey stop, come on in. The Holocaust Museum is asking visitors to please stop catching Pokemon here. Meanwhile, adults on TV are having a ball, acting like kids, firing Pokeballs at the crew. There's Pidgey. Uh, oh, right Pidgey, you ought to move. I got him. Genie Mouse. <laughs> got him right in the Pokemon. New York. How great is that? Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you back here at 11. Good night. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Roser from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can.